Hey, hey, everyone. Today we are starting a new tutorial series on a piece of software that can potentially change the whole tenor of your campaign. Enter Dungeon Alchemist. Welcome back to the channel, leets and returnees. And for those of you who are just meandering on through for the first time, thank you for clicking on this video. You'll thank me later. Today, we are going to get into a whole new series. But before we do, I want to turn your attention over to the community tab once again. For some of you, this is a repeat, but for those of you who maybe missed the last video or didn't watch it, here we go. New poll at the community tab. And it's asking you the question of what other social media would you like to connect with RPG Elite? Got a couple different options for you. And of course, as always, if those options don't do you good, then you can always go in and add your own in the comments. So the link for that is in the description below. And you can do that after, of course, you get done watching this video. Dungeon Alchemist. I did a video on this last year and it was basically an intro video because I was part of the Kickstarter, just letting you know what was coming down the pike. Then it must have been about a week or two ago or something like that. I did my first YouTube short and it was on Dungeon Alchemist and it was telling you guys the tutorials are coming and now, well, They have arrived. The series begins today. Let's get started, folks. Dungeon Alchemist. This is part one of two parts of a, just a basic overview, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty in the weeks to come. Okay, so here we are in Dungeon Alchemist, and we're just gonna go through the menus here and get ourselves set up on a basic level. So let's click File, and the first one we're gonna click is new map. And here you have options. Over here is a print option. If you are doing person to person campaigns, face to face, and you wanna print out your maps so you can use them for your campaign, you have your options here. You have a few different options that are pre-done for you so you can pick it. And what's really weird is they got American poster twice with the same exact options. And I'm not real sure why I think that might be a bug. So I have to report that. And if you're not digging any of these dimensions, you can always go down here and just push custom and then put in whatever dimensions that you'd like. Over here, you have your orientation. So this is landscape mode and then you can click it to portrait mode and as you can see over here when you do that they switch go back to landscape and they switch over so this is the width and the height and the tile size and it tells you right down here what it is now you can either do this in centimeters or you can go to inches you have three different options when it comes to the terrain i'm going to switch back over to digital for this one and over here, it's assumed that even in digital, it's assumed these are one inch by one inch tiles that you have. So you have three different types of terrain, dark parchment, forest, grasslands. For this one, I'm going to do forest. And now you have some more options. Dark parchment doesn't give you anything. And dark parchment is more for like if you're doing some interior building work. The other ones obviously is for outdoors, the forest and the grasslands. So you can see here you have elevation, vegetation and water, bodies of water that you can add. And here on the elevation, you got a couple of them, about six or seven different elevation ones. And the cool thing here is like in canyons, you do not have the option of having no water. It could be flooded or a river or lake, lakeside or an island. However, in flatlands, you do have that option of no water, but you just don't have the option of it being flooded. So you can mix and match here, whatever you would like. The vegetation over here, obviously, all your greenage, you can have no vegetation, broadleaf, green leaf, or evergreen, I should say, um, forest or clearings. So for this map, I'm gonna make some hills. 
and i'm gonna go with a broadleaf forest and i'm gonna add a river all right so let's go ahead and click create and it will automatically populate this for you now it has this window over here this is very annoying i'm going to click on this because i don't have the amount of real estate that i would like for you guys i'm also going to do something else i'll show you how i do this later when we get to the menu give me a little bit more real estate so there is the map that we've created now if we want to go ahead and we want to save this map we can save it to wherever we want to save it and uh, probably save it over here to Dungeon Alchemist. And you could save it and it's gonna, you give it a name. And uh, we're just gonna call, you know, Test Forest Map. And click Save. Now we're gonna click on a new map again because we're gonna make a new one with some dark parchment in the background make it simple we're not going to do anything with the sizes here we're going to click create and there we go and i'm going to click this again so i can have some real estate and there's my grid now if i wanted to open up that map again i would just go up here to file click open map it's going to go to my test forest map and, and then i'm going to open it up and there it is but we are actually going to make that dark parchment map so let's go ahead and go here and create that and get rid of that one there we go and again, I'm gonna put that over there. They really need to change that. That's a little annoying. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I made like a generic map here so we can go ahead and we can look at these export settings. So we go to file, the export, and this, these are the settings here that you have for exporting your maps. The first option that you have here is format. And you can export it into several different formats for your favorite virtual tabletop. For example, you got Foundry right here, which is the first one. Yay! You got Fantasy Grounds. You got one that I will never mention on this channel for various reasons. So I will not mention that name, but you can read it. You have the Universal VTT export. So that's if you're running something like Map Tools or Let's Roll or da, 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 Skirmish. Or if you just want to do the image only, which is kind of another way of doing a universal, you got that option as well. Now I'm going to keep it on Foundry because I have that, though I could, I do have at Let's Roll and I do have Map Tools and I do have Skirmish. Man, I have too many of them, but let's, let's keep going. You have your perspective here. And this is really why I made the map real quick so you can see what happens. So you've got your full th on 3d walls which is what it's at right now this is full on 3d which is what it will export as but then you have your limited perspective 3d walls watch what happens to the walls okay they get a little they scrunch down a little bit to get a little shorter it's not full 3d but it's kind of like a a medium in between 3d and your orthographic and orthographic is just a full top down old 2d map and this is what that looks like so you have those three options in terms of what kind of map that you want to export to now a orthographic top down obviously is one like if you're doing in person that's the one that you want to want the 3d thing would be kind of weird you may want to even do some limited 3d if it'll look right but mostly it'll probably be orthographic but your full 3d more for those of us who are running virtual tabletops here you have your lighting and the default actually is it renders lights in image and export to VTT. Let me go ahead and switch this back to 3D so you can actually see this. OK, so here you have the lights. And so what it's going to do is going to render these the lights that the lights are on like it is right now in the image. But it's also going to export the settings for your particular VTT for your lighting. So whatever VTT that you're running, you can go in, you can change the lighting, but it'll automatically export that for you. But you do have the option of only rendering the lights in the image. So what that means is that if you click on that, 
this right here is the only thing that renders and you will have to go in and do all of the lights manually once you import it into your vtt or you can go listen i don't want the lights to be on let's say i don't want the lights on there's or there's only going to be some lights on or some lights off then you just export the settings in vtt only and then you can go in and put on whatever lights that you would like to put on so i'm going to put that back to mm, i'm probably going to do probably that one i'm actually going to keep it at that because i like to turn on my lights can you know some of them are brighter some of them are not that's the kind of detail i like but anyway the last one is your image quality and you have three different ones. You have your low, your high, and your very high. I really think they should expand this. Low quality, 72. It's kind of like a medium quality at 125, a high quality at 175, and a very high at 300. That's my suggestion if anybody from Dungeon Alchemist is watching. Last, you have the grid. And this is outside here. And if you're exporting a map, uh, I don't know why you would want that, but if you do, then you can change the color of the grid, you can change it to green, change it to blue, change it to red, or you can keep it at the gray and you can also adjust the transparency or opacity, make it darker. Oh, what was that? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, that was very odd because my dungeon alchemist crashed. Not a good sign. But anyway, so let's keep going back here. I was talking about transparency of your grid. So you can change the colors and you can just take it down. And normally when I'm working with my grids, I like to keep it light anyway. But if I'm exporting, I usually just turn it all the way off. But here's your options over here in case you want to keep it on. Then you just smack this export button and then you'll be good to go. Part one of a two part series there for you and I don't know exactly when part two will come out. It'll be a couple of weeks. Again, I come out on every Tuesday and Friday. I might throw another video in here and there. I've been doing some mad, I've been mad productive lately. And so thank the Lord, I'm gonna be far ahead and I might throw in some couple videos on some off days. So be looking for it. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. And of course, this video right here, if it's done anything for you in terms of adding value for your tabletop RPG experience, then you can go ahead and crush the like button. Yeah! Oh yeah, that's how I do it. I'm gonna do something a little different every single time. Just a little bit, just a little bit. That's it for me, folks. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna pull my snaggle puss. So Until the next time, I hope you have a wonderful week this week. And if you've got some games going on this week, then you know how I do it. All I'm gonna say is happy gaming.